So I'm going to talk a little bit about like bloodline. Not, I'm not going to. I don't want to give too much away because there's a lot of surprises in this book. But I just want to talk about some of the things that became this story and where the story sort of originated from. Some of those things that ended up in that box. The first thing that ended up ended in the, that was at the bottom of this box is actually supporting the bottom of this box. It's really old, and so probably the dumb, somewhere at the bottom of the mice probably ruined. But what's supporting that box was a Time magazine, and I it's been there for a couple of years. And I sort of forgot about it. And I, where that came from, I was standing in Bel Air over in the Greenhaven Pocket area. And, you know, they have the magazines lined up right there. And so there's a Time Magazine up there. And the article in Time Magazine was 2045, the year man becomes immortal. So I was checking out, I kept looking back at that magazine going, that seems sort of preposterous. I mean, 2045, that's theoretically within our own lifespan. So potentially people that are like right, born right now can live to that age and get the keys to immortality and live forever. I thought that's not possible. So I ended up buying the magazine. It took me about a, a month to actually read it, but you know, I bought it. That counts. I, I believe firmly in that, by the way. I don't care if you read Bloodline, just buy it. <laughs> it's perfect for lining the bottom of a, you know, a cardboard box to support it. It's very sturdy, 400 and some odd pages. So. That started me on sort of a year long. It wasn't intense. I just sort of sort of started from you know started a little bit and got a little branch, a little bit, got built bigger and bigger. And I found some some really strange things going on in the life extension sciences. Some things that are very creepy. Some things that are very amazing. And one very scary Soviet archival footage. At the back of my book, I lay out what's true and what's not. And this time, I actually left video links. I'm going to warn you now. The very first video link is to that archival footage that became the story. You must have a strong stomach to watch that video. If you want to understand how creepy some of this stuff is, the Soviets are doing experiments about reviving dead bodies. If you want to see what they were doing, they documented it. And I showed it to my editor, and she goes, I wish you never showed me that. <laughs> so you've been warned. But there's a lot of strange things going on in that whole field. Uh, just to give you some examples, there's sort of two different camps when it comes to life extension. One is taking machines and moving them into our bodies. And that's basically using nanotechnology or, or using diff different types of synthetics to replace wear out, you know, worn out parts. Uh, just currently, they just came out with the synthetic pancreas to replace uh, ailing pancreas or people that have diabetes. Of course, we all know about the artificial hearts and different types of heart pumps. But they're systematically finding new ways of replacing these worn out parts. And if you replace enough parts, you theoretically can live longer and longer and longer. That's one side. The other side of that is taking machines, I mean, rather taking mankind and moving them into machines. And that's taking basically your human consciousness and trying to shift it into the synthetic arena. And there's a, um, IBM is working with a project with some Swiss scientists. Uh, it's called the Big Blue Brain Project. That scientists, they're really creative with their names. That's called the Big Blue Brain Project. And what they're doing, they're trying to create a virtual brain, full synapse by synapse, neuron by neuron, recreation synthetically of a human brain. And they say at this point, they're only about 10 years from completing that project. And once that's done, it's basically an empty shell that they either can grow in artificial intelligence or potentially shift a human consciousness into that unit. So that's how close we are just within 10 years. So that's just some of the, you know, just scratching the surface of some of the things going on that, that you'll find out in this book. Third thing, something that's explored here that I don't want to give too much away is there's now some research in genetics, how to manipulate and unlock the keys of our DNA to extend life. That's something that's sort of a crux of this novel, so I'm not going to tell you anything more about that. 